Now, next, a show that teaches children about sex and relationships is cancelled. It's planned tour of theatres after violent threats were made against its organisers. The family sex show was pulled from venues after an online backlash to its frank and open attitude towards boundaries, gender, relationships and masturbation. According to the producers, the show was suitable for children aged five upwards, was designed to open up conversations around sex and relationships. But how should we approach sex education? What role should theatre groups like this one play? Millie Hill is a writer, journalist, author of My Period, Find Your Flow and Feel Proud of Your Period. Hello, Millie. Hi, Stephen. Good evening. Hello there. Good evening. Peter Tatchell's with us tonight, human rights campaigner. Hello, Peter. Greetings, Stephen. Good evening, good evening. Right, Millie, what's... Yeah. Where's the where where should the boundaries be here? What are your concerns with this family sex show? Well, I think there's a, a huge lack of boundaries all over this show and all over this organisation's website. For a start off, the name, <laughs> family sex show. I mean, these are people who profess to have you know a strong awareness of you know sex and relationships and education and be very kind of like in touch with all the right things to do and say. Well. We all know what a sex show is, um, you know, even the na most naive among us. And to then call it the family sex show, I mean, if they didn't realise what they were doing there, I just can't believe the level of naivety. Um, and then, you know, on their website, there's all kinds of extremely worrying content. The most worrying, perhaps, of all is that they suggest to children, and again, the boundaries aren't there because they don't, they're never really clear what age children they're talking to, but it wouldn't really matter in this case because they suggest, you know, masturbation is great, um, which is fine, obviously, although it depends what age child you're talking to. Um, but then they say, did you know also that animals masturbate? And maybe you might like to go away and Google um, at masturbating animals and see what kind of animals you can find that masturbate. And then you might like to draw pictures of them. Well, none of that's an appropriate thing to be suggesting to a young person to do. There's, there's huge red flags for safeguarding there in terms of telling a child to go and Google something like that. So, yeah, the whole of the website, the whole of the organisation just seems to have no awareness of age appropriate education M maybe the, maybe they were maybe they were presuming that no decent parent would let their child be looking any of that stuff up without supervision and then if there's supervision there why not well, so don't let it, so in other words don't let a 5 or 6 year old child look up masturbation but because a 14 15 year old child will no doubt be interested in that territory why not have mum and dad there on the computer, understanding it, understanding that it's natural, understanding that it's part of, of growing up. Why not? Yeah, but, well, because if you haven't got any decent filters on your, um, on your internet search... Your parents a filter. Well, yes, but if you Google masturbating animals and you haven't got filters on, which some parents may not have on, you're going to find some extremely inappropriate pornographic content. Peter? Well, I can't vouch for every single thing that this... Uh event was purporting to do or say, but I do think the clue is in the name. It's called The Family Sex Show. So the idea is to bring parents and kids together to discuss sex. And they said very clearly that there'll be free family workshops before the show with professional sex educators and counsellors present to advise and support families. Also, Anybody who signed up for it was given full details about the content. So that would give any parents a veto over their child attending if they felt that the content was inappropriate. Um, I've got, just got to remind you, the purpose of this is not about promoting sex or the sexualization of kids. It's about addressing young kids' concerns and anxieties about things like menstruation in young girls, um, erections in boys, uh, wet dreams, um, physiological changes, the growth of pubic hair or breasts in girls. Um, these are things that young people need to be made aware of because we know from the research a lot of young yeah. kids get very anxious and nervous and don't understand it. So this is all about giving people understanding so they feel comfortable with their bodies. It's not about promoting sex. 
Can I just tell you about the glossary that they have on their website? Because I think this is one of the most extraordinary things. They have a, a glossary on their website of different terms. And some of them, it's all mixed in together. Again, no boundaries. They've got a whole bunch of terms about theatre. So like stage right and stage left. And they've got a few kind of social justice things. And then they in, mixed in with all that. They have BDSM, dildo, handjob, kink, pegging play parties in a glossary of terms which is supposed to be appropriate for young people to be learning about on their website from five up. Well, I'm not sure that that is true, that that is all applicable to young kids five and up. I think it is about the parents sign up and they decide whether it's appropriate for their child, whether their child is old enough and what precisely they want their child to discuss, and that's why yeah. they have the that's why they have the family workshops beforehand. And I think it's absolutely great to involve parents because it gives parents ownership and control over the discussion, and they can, of course, at any point intervene to say, "No, I don't want my child discussing this. I think we've heard enough. Thank you. Uh, it's time to move on." Yeah, but kids can use the internet. So if they've been taken to see a show by their parents and their parents said, oh, this is all great, when apparently the show also involves nudity on stage and simulated masturbation and that kind of thing, which is also not very age appropriate for, you know, uh, all ages of children or perhaps any. But are they then not going to go home and go on the internet themselves? They're not going to necessarily have their parents with them and think, oh, I'm going to look at that website of that really kind of wacky show we just went to see. And then they are going to see that glossary. Is it, you know, and if it isn't age appropriate, what, why do they need well, to know about pegging? <laughs> but look, look uh, any child who reads... Why does anybody tabloid... need to know about pegging is, is another question, but that's for a different oh. show, isn't it? <laughs> Any child today can pick up a tabloid newspaper and read pages and pages about sex, including some quite sex explicit stuff. I think it's really good that this program is at least in trying or intending to make it all contextualized, to give people a bit of grounding in facts and figures and an understanding with parental involvement. Because kids are going to find this stuff from the internet themselves, they're going to hear it from classmates at school. They're going to find it in tabloid newspapers or indeed on television. So to do it in this context with the parents, I think is a good move. And I'm not necessarily saying I endorse every single thing they're saying, but where it is age appropriate, and that, that is an important, you've made a good point there, where it's age appropriate, then I think it's okay. I think that's the problem, though, is that how do you offer age-appropriate sex education to all age children at once? That's where they've really fallen down. You can't do that, and it's not right to try and do that because that's not what the government advises. That's not what relationships and sex education is built on. All the guidelines talk about age-appropriate and introducing ideas gradually. So to open the doors to, to five and up all the way through to you know teenagers, you can't really get that right. And you can tell from their website that they're flailing around trying to sort of meet everybody and fill, you know, every need. And it's just not possible to do that. And it's not safe. It's not safe for young people. Well, I, I might be wrong, but I was under the impression that what they offered would be age appropriate according to the parents' wishes and the age of the child. I don't think what they're presenting is the universal model for all kids of all ages. But, you know, I might be wrong there, but I, I don't think so. And well, I'd think... be very surprised because I think their intention is great. I mean, they, they're concerned about, you know, not only kids' anxiety about, you know, physiological changes during puberty, but also about stopping unwanted teenage pregnancy and abortions, stopping sexually transmitted diseases, stopping sexual abuse, whether it be by older people okay. or by people of a similar age. So Fine. I think the intention is good. Final word to you, Millie. Well, I was just going to say there isn't anything on their website that I can see about many of those topics that Peter has just mentioned. The main content of the website is all about sexuality and sex. And it just isn't appropriate to, and it isn't safe. It's, it's got red flags all over it for child safeguarding. You can't offer that kind of content to all age children, and especially in a theatre setting as well. We haven't even really talked about that. Um, I hope it doesn't ha actually happen. Millie, thank you. Peter, thank you. Here comes the 11 o'clock news.